Good morning, YouTubers and gun fanatics. So today, we're going to do a quick breakdown of the Walther P22 field strip. Or, um, show you guys how to do the cleaning on it, or rather just a quick breakdown. I'm not going to do a cleaning. If you guys own a firearm, you know how to clean it, but try to get this set here. I'm just going to do a quick breakdown of it. You guys should know how to clean your firearm if you own it. You should know how to break a firearm down if you own it. So, no magazine. Magazine well is empty. Just bring her in. No round in the chamber. So, first off, uh, these guns come. It's the Walther P22. It's a first-gen model. They don't really call them first-gens, but there was two models that came out. This is one of the first-gens, one of the first ones that came out. They came with the uh, threaded barrel. Comes with this cool little fake mock suppressor deal thing. Makes it look like a James Bond gun, which is pretty cool. Uh, I grew up playing GoldenEye on Nintendo 64, so it's you know kind of a go-to for me. Plus, it's a fun, cheap, plinking gun. Pretty accurate, which uh, which is awesome. It has a Picatinny rail if you want to throw a laser or light combo or either or on there. Uh, ambidextrous mag drop, ambidextrous safety. It's on both sides of the firearm, which is really cool. Uh, anyways, first thing we're going to do is we're going to, I already loosened this off camera with my uh, Gerber, but anyways, uh, the threaded barrel adapter, we're going to uh, loosen that. Obviously, it's going to be tighter if you're having it on a functioning firearm, but like I said, I loosened it off camera. <clears throat> we'll set that off to the side. And then your slide release is right here, so just kind of pull that down, and then rack the slide, lift up a little bit, and then slide it all forward. You go slow, otherwise the spring will fall out and go shooting everywhere. We'll set the slide and the recoil spring guide rod off to the side. Your barrel shroud here. It is a fixed barrel on this firearm, uh, as you can see. Um, this There's a little notch focus. There's a little notch right there. So that slides over the barrel into the gun. And then you put your barrel nut on the end. You can either do the adapt threaded the threaded barrel adapter, or it does come with just a standard barrel nut <clears throat> to hold the barrel uh, barrel shroud on, as you can see here. And then obviously the threaded barrel adapter <clears throat> threads on, and then it does have a, a cap that you can put on to cover up the threads to protect the threads. Anyways, moving on. So we we'll take that off the barrel shroud internal barrel shroud and then the actual barrel itself slides out of the fixed mount on the firearm like so and then you just conduct your standard cleaning <clears throat> it's a 22 caliber so it is obviously <clears throat> excuse me sorry guys <clears throat> rim fire <clears throat> 22 long rifle um, so you know do your standard cleaning um, and then uh, reassembly, obviously. Uh, you do need the toolkit. Hopefully you have it if you did purchase the firearm used. Uh, it does come with a small toolkit, and this right here will make your life a lot easier. Um, it does come with some other things. The firearm itself uh, it comes with this little tool because it does have a frame lock. I'll show you guys that in a second. It comes with an extra back strap if you have smaller hands or larger hands. And then it comes with three extra front sights. Uh, I'll probably lose these if I dump them out of the bag, so I'm just going to leave them in the bag. But they're just standard front sights with a white dot on them. Um, and different elevations for different people. Different strokes for different folks, I guess, were what I'm trying to say. Uh, depending on what you like and how you like to fire your gun. Now, the slide, the firearm lock itself. So this key here goes into this little spot. Try not to get the uh, serial number on here. Goes in there, and then you can see there's an F and an S, and you just turn it, and that locks the uh, frame of the firearm to prevent it from firing. Extra added safety. Honestly, since I've had the gun, I've never used it, and I probably won't. But to me, it's just one more thing to fail. It's one more thing to get in the way in the event you didn't need it. Now, this is a plinking gun. It's not a home defense gun by any means. But at the same time, it's... Uh, if you were in a position and this is the only firearm you had near you, close to you, you're not going to want to mess around trying to find the key to unlock the frame of the gun to be able to fire it if you're in a situation that you need it. Um, if this is a gun for a child or something uh, that you're learning, to sh you know, training to shoot, um, teaching to shoot, then maybe it'd be a good idea to keep that on uh, if you're at the range or if you're in your backyard or whatever the case, but, you know, 
for me. Everybody in my household knows how to shoot. Everybody knows how to respect firearms, so I'm not concerned. Moving on. This tool here, this is what you're going to do. You're going to slide it in here. You're going to meet it up with the guide rod, just like that. Okay? Just like that. And this makes life a lot easier when reassembling this firearm. Now, I've gotten pretty good at it um, without using the tool, but just for training's sake with you guys, uh, showing you how to, you know, disassemble and break down the gun, put it back together, we're going to go ahead and use it. So your barrel shroud, internal barrel shroud can go back over. Stick it in... <clears throat> the fixed mount in the firearm frame and just kind of wiggle it around until you feel a lock in well not lock in but you'll feel the the you can see here there's a little notch there's a key to tooth in there and just kind of wiggle it around until you feel a lock in you'll um, you'll use the non threaded barrel nut um, to put the firearm back together because you can't fit the threaded barrel nut through the slide so just get it finger tight because we're going to be taking it off here again in a second and then your slide you're going to take your pin guide rod pin here tool that comes with the firearm it will automatically go through but it does seat the spring and you're going to push that in just like so it will fall out gun goes back together push your slide release back up firearms back together simple as that pretty easy it's a pretty little fun little gun rack the slide back if you're gonna go with the threaded barrel shroud now you will have to hold inside here inside the ejection port on the firearm hold the barrel because once you loosen this it will become loose again unscrew this get your threaded barrel nut get it on about three quarters of the way like so Make sure your barrel thread, your interior internal barrel shroud is still locked in place, and then go ahead and tighten it down. And you can use a Gerber, or if you have a wrench handy, or whatever the case, to make sure it's you know functioning tight. And then rack it, <clears throat> and then you can either put your thread thread protector uh, cap on, or you can go ahead and. Throw on the old cool mock fake suppressor. Now I've run a lot of different ammo through this gun, and the um, I can't remember the brand. Aquila, Aquila. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm probably saying it wrong. Makes a round that is um, only fires off of a primer. There's no powder in the gun, and it is super quiet without the fake suppressor but if you run the fake suppressor it sounds like a bb gun i have an airsoft gun that is louder than this gun with uh, that round obviously there's no charge behind it because it's just running off a primer but you get the idea so it is not a suppressor by any means but if you run subsonic ammo through it um you know it will quiet it down a bit anyways it's the walther uh p22 uh, James Bond gun as I call it uh, I think it's super cool um, I did some plinking with it the other day out in the backyard here at my ranch and uh, it's it's super fun uh, the only downside of it is mags are $30 a piece for extra mags um, it does sorry I didn't cover that it does come with a 10 round mag um, pretty standard you know uh, there's this giant block in here which I think could have been uh, cut down by Walter and made it um, to have definitely a few more rounds uh, in it. Uh, definitely think it could have been a 15 round magazine. Um, I don't know, I haven't done any research on the mags, so maybe they do make a higher capacity magazine for this firearm. Uh, I haven't looked yet, I just did a quick search um, the other day to see how much magazines for it was, and they were $29.99, the cheapest I found. So, you know, and with any, like with any gun, you know, um, I think these are Winchesters, Super X, yeah. Um, you know, like with any gun, um, I'm horrible with my 22s because I dumped them all. These are Remingtons. Um, I'm horrible with my 22s. Unless they're a special breed of 22, I dump them all together in one tub, uh, one ammo can. So, you know, in this aspect, you're going to see different range of ammo in the gun. You know, we got some hollow points here. And they're all 40, 40 or 42 grain, whatever it is, but, uh, you know, just some standard ball ammo, and then they're, you know, 22 hollows, 
Um, but anyways, you know, it's uh, definitely some room for improvement on the mags. Because there's this giant black block right here that you could have easily fit probably another five rounds in this gun. In this magazine, a little bit higher capacity. Uh, it is a toy gun, as I, I call it, I guess. It's not really the greatest term to use, but um, it's a plinker, you know. Uh, definitely want to be able to have a lot of fun with it. And 10 rounds isn't enough, I feel. And the magazine has the capacity because, I mean, look, from this guide here all the way to the top, that's black. That's plastic. You know, there could have easily been another three or five rounds in there. Um, but it is nice having that little thumb release. Uh, lever, whatever you want to call it here. It is nice having that on there to reload the mags with. Um, but, yeah, anyways, uh, Walther P22, 22 long rifle. Uh, the one thing that I did find on this firearm I thought was interesting, I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not, and uh, I'm kind of curious about this. Smith & West, let's see if I can get it to focus. And I lost the camera. It's probably not going to focus. So, yeah, I can't get it to focus on it. But it has Smith & Wesson stamped on the side of the firearm, on the slide. I know Smith & Wesson made an m and 22 similar to this, but, yeah, I can't get it to focus. Sorry, guys. Uh, but it does, trust me, take my word for it, it does have Smith & Wesson Springfield, Massachusetts on the side of the firearm, as well as Carl Walther, UTM, made in Germany. But, yeah, I was kind of curious about that, but... I don't know, I guess with a little bit of uh, searching on the, the old YouTube, I'd be able to figure all that out. Anyways, that's what that's uh, that's where I'm at with this one, guys. Just a quick breakdown. Show you guys how to field strip the Walter P-22. Have a great day.